So this is the first part of the history of uh, web or computers in general. At this point, there was no internet, obviously. Uh, at the very beginning, sort of more mechanical robots um, that were built, um, starting with that slide. But there was also a machine called the Zuse Maschine, um, and uh, it was developed by Konrad Zuse in Stuttgart, Germany. And uh, my grandfather was actually working with him on this project. It was the first computer working with electronic pipes, um, and uh, it could do all four calculations uh, like plus minus divide and multiply it did not have a graphic user interface um, that wasn't until the 70s when the uh, um, Xerox corporation developed uh, a computer with a graphical user interface and uh, uh, the story is that Steve Jobs was invited to see it and it must have kind of clicked with him that this was the future to have this interface um, later on I'm going to show you one of his first computers but in the beginning, computers were used for research um, uh, topics between the universities. They tried to do uh, an internet to hook them up so they could exchange their latest um, data. There were a few machines, just a, a, a couple, less than a dozen, and they had to be all running at the same time to be connected, but they found out that the internet always crashed once a week until they found out that this might have been due to uh, the cleaning staff unplugging the computer to put on the vacuum cleaners um, until they put a sticker on the machine not to unplug it. And uh, in Europe, they had, uh, at the same time, they developed uh, Minitel, was a French invention, and it could uh, you could look up stock tickers and um, train tickets. You could order uh, tickets for concerts and things like that. Or in Germany, they had teletext on uh, TV. I never really used it because you had to pay per minute that you were using the service, and a minute was still pretty expensive. It was like 50 cents or so to, to look at this information. And it was running on an 8-bit system that had 64 pixels across. So you could do sort of um, little crazy animations. They even had like little sexy pictures on there, um, which is it's kind of funny to look at it at this point. Um, in the 70s, uh, Xerox, like I said, developed um, the the Alto machine with the, and it was for a computer could use a, a consumer could a regular consumer could use it. it. Didn't have to be a scientist or it didn't have to be a computer geek to understand this. You could, without programming knowledge, you could um, uh, work on this machine. And so um, also did Steve Jobs. He developed Lisa. It's, he said it would stand for Local Integrated Software Architecture. But also his daughter's name is Lisa, so it might be connected in a way. Um, it's just an anecdote, I don't know if it's true. Um, then the first file format for pictures was a, a GIF. It's a graphics interchange format. It works on 256 colors, and it doesn't need any compression. It's called a LZW compression, but it only records the changes between the pixels. So if you have a long line of white pixels or like one color that never changes, there's no change to record, so the file would be very small. But if you have vertical uh, stripes across those, um, it would have to record every time it comes across a change and that file would actually get bigger. But it, this is the compression of, of a GIF. And let me play the top here. That was for a website uh, that talked about death in Disneyland. At um, I think the platform back then was uh, Stim. It was sort of like during the GeoCities time of the web. Um, and uh, that was about... I, I built these animations for another um, blogging network called SonicNet. Um, at the time, I think they were very far out because they already realized that blogs were sort of like content creation. It was like a whole, whole revolution of journalism, but um, they, didn't, they weren't really too corporate to, to get big sponsors at that time. Um, this is the first ever web page um, that was on an HTML-based language. Um, it still exists, and if you look at the Wayback Machine, you can still look up at some of these really old websites. Um, uh, the web browser had to be invented for people to actually access this information. Like, you can program all you want, but if nobody can have a tool to see it. So the first browsers were, were um, the Firefox or Mosaic, um, not Firefox, um, Net, Netscape, 
um, was the first one, yeah. Um, so all the pictures were GIFs, and uh, this is um, uh, one of the, um, I think Yahoo is this page? Uh, no, CNN. Um, the, they had a website in 96, and all the pictures are GIF, and they do have already banners for advertising, so somebody already paid for it. Yeah, I worked for SonicNet. They did um, a lot of um, cool uh, stories uh, on um, but everything, even this picture on the bottom, is it's a, a large GIF. Um, and you can see the browser here on the banner on the top. There is a um, a home button even where you, where you, you have a little house there, um, and it had a, a button that said "What's new?" Um, so you could still list all of the websites that came out in a single day on one page so people could look at it and we would look every day like oh look like American Airlines has a website or uh, Delta Airlines has a new website or all these companies coming up it was sort of really new even McDonald didn't have a web page they didn't know what they what they needed this for um, then uh, a lot of these uh, computer need uh, geeks started having blogs and uh, MTV wanted to have a website and uh, am I, I'm gonna come across this one in a second um, GeoCities was one of those old blogging um, platforms that everybody used I think MTV is coming up a little bit so um, Yahoo started in 93 and it, it uh, had the first million um, sites so you, you need to have some kind of a directory to search for the websites besides having the browser so that was the next step um, then cookies came ar across that could record your session, which was important for um, e-commerce because if you need to have a shopping cart, you need to somewhere you need to store that information as long as people are storing uh, uh, shopping uh, what they put in their cart and then the, the payment information you had to store it somewhere so you needed to have a cookie there was a big fight about if this cookie should be local or with the um, website host or or with the um, with the um, like the, the company that that runs the website or just on the server um, it ended up being with with the uh, um, people that actually um, sell this and it was sort of a trade-off because um, somehow this had to be financed and having e-commerce sites was the only way to really get the web off the ground before it was just like a, a playground but if there wasn't money behind it and investments then it couldn't really take off and at that point it actually really took off and became really large um, another file format started called the JPEG um, it's a short for joint photographic experts group it has millions of colors, which is much better for photographs um, where you have uh, smoother transitions and blends so you don't see the steps between, if you only have 256 colors, you can see each color like choppy, it's like dittery. Um, MTV here, once again, I'm, I'm coming to it, um, had a splash page. That was a, a new thing too, because if you had to use your phone to download the, the first page, um, you wanted to see something right away, but if that was a large picture, it would take a couple minutes before it even started to load. But MTV said, I, we don't care, we think it's the future, let's make big pictures. And Beavis and Butthead was the first show, the first splash, pa splash page on the web. Um, at this point, the consumer is not just a nerd, but it's somebody that, like, somebody writes blogs and, and stuff. Uh, but um, now it's, it's becoming a consumer to, to watch um, movies and to, to look at content um, and, and buy products. Um, still, the, the bandwidth was very low. Um, so it would be kind of cool to repeat the uh, background images with, with uh, because you only had to load that picture once and it would just repeat forever. So uh, for a while, web pages looked like, like this a lot with these repeated um, uh, styles. And then uh, Napster was, um, uh, you, could, you could download music, which was uh, another big step. Now people can upload content and they become the participants. That was in 99. At this time, the web already got really huge. Everybody was using it. 